Let's have a chat about multi-material stack printing. What exactly is it? How do you go about getting your 3D printer settings for it and all of that? But first, let's figure out why it exists. So the reason why it exists is this here is called iron stack printing, which is between every multi-board tile. We've done an ironing pass with the 3D printer, which basically means it's not extruding, it's just putting its hot end across everything to make it super flat. So then you're able to just grab a tile and you can see here, it takes a bit and you can just pull it apart like that. Now that takes a very well calibrated printer to pull that off. Different materials act differently to one another. And honestly, I get it. It can be a little bit tricky to sort that out. So if you have a multi-material printer and you don't mind adding a little bit of extra time, that's when multi-material stack printing really comes into its own but there are a couple of pros and cons. So let me just quickly run down. I have a list right here. So pros, multi-material gives you a much cleaner bottom when you're separating the tiles. So here it is, a close up of what it looks like when you've done an ironed pull apart. So underneath the iron tile, it looks like this. And then right here, that's what it looks like underneath a multi-material one. Now, objectively, it, you might think it looks worse. It also depends how you have your print settings sorted out. So Either way, it's a little bit marred compared to just printing them one by one. So that is it. The other pro is that they're just easier to take apart because what we're doing here is taking advantage that PTG and PLA just do not want to stick to one another. And that's why they're easier to take apart. But there's a whole bunch of cons. The multi-material stack prints, well, they're usually slower to print. In fact, here's an eight by eight core tile multi-material. Here's an eight by eight core tile iron printing. The trade-off doesn't look right, does it? And on top of that, here it is as a four by four. Does the trade-off look right? It's up to you if you think that trade-off is worth it for you. Of course, you also need to have two different types of filament. You need to have PTG and PLA. And I really do mean this, every single filament is different here. So you're going to need to do a lot more testing than just the ironing to figure out what exactly is going on there. And you're going to need a multi-material printer because I strongly do not recommend to do the pause printing change filament technique for the multi-material printing. I tried it, it's a real hassle. Honestly, just do it tile by tile if you don't have that multi-material printer. But with that all said and done, let's jump in and show you exactly how to do all of the settings for this. So I'm gonna be using Bamboo Slicer. It is basically the same in most other slicers that have multi-material. So first, you're gonna need that test file. The test file is down below. It's a little two by two multi-material print tile like so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click it and split it by objects. Now, that's right, inside of this one file, there's actually two objects. There is the tile object here and the interface object here. We have these little pillars off to the side of them because that's what stops this when you click split of it all just collapsing down flat. Now, once we've done that, let's always set the default multiport settings. So I'm gonna go over here. I set the seam position over to random for the strongest tiles possible. I'm also gonna change the strength of the wall perimeters, the wall loops to three, and that's all the multiboard settings. But what about the settings for this? Well, first, let's just go to the interface layer and change that to PTG. So there it is, it's now done. You might think that that's it, but here is the extra bit. These two have different temperatures when it comes to the bed and we do not want that temperature change because that makes PLA prone to clogging <clears throat> when you raise the temperature like that. So first let's find out the PLA, which is what I'm doing my tiles out of. You can switch this round, but keep the lower temperature. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The PLA here is at 55 degrees, so keep that number in mind. I'm gonna to go to the PTG. I'm gonna change all of these to 55 because I don't know what bill plate you're working with. So change all of those to 55, 55. I'm gonna go here, change that all up there, change that one there. And the last one to change is the flow rate. What? Yes, we're changing the flow rate. And what I'm gonna change it to is 1.1 for the PTG. Now I'll explain why in just a moment right now. So there we go, that's all the changes we need to do, but let me explain. When we're printing, we have 
PLA and then the PTG comes and gets laid right on top of that. PLA and PTG are literally water and oil and they do not want to stick to one another. So how can we force them to stick to one another? You over extrude the PTG so that when it's extruded rather than laying on top, it actually bulges out a little bit and just grips the bottom stack by just a tiny little bit and that makes all the difference. I had countless failures before. Once I've done that basically over extrusion, it's totally fine. Now you do need to test that over extrusion. I found that for me, 1.1 is the Goldilocks zone. However, you might need to go all the way up to 1.3, but I also find that that's too much because then that really creates a marred surface on the bottom layer of that PLA stack. You might need to go all the way down to just one. It's up to you. You need to do these print setting changes and tests, and that's why we have this little test file. So let me just jump back to the screen here. So we've got it here. It's now ready to go. All I'm going to do is click slice. And once this is sliced up, you'll see that we start with two layers of the PTG and the PLA together. I did two layers because it's easier to remove. And then it goes and does the entire tile then it finishes the tile, it does the PTG, and then it starts the other tile. And it's that simple and easy. Now, what happens when you're trying to do a great big tile? Because you've got this lovely purge tile as well. So I have that right here off to the side to show you as well. So let's grab an eight by eight core tile and do the exact same thing. So we already have all the settings in place, but what we want to do is right click, we're gonna split it, by the objects. We give that a little moment to split it up and one, there we have it. Now we're gonna grab the PTG layer, change that here, perfect. And now you can see we have this purge tower in the way. So what do we do? Well, you can change the shape of that. Go to other and here, the prime tower. I'm gonna change that over to just be five millimeters. And what I like to do is I change this to 100. It's probably overkill, um, but that's what I do. That there, I just whack it off to the side over there. And now I have enough space here to grab everything, go with move, and I can even move the tile up a little bit this way, maybe a little bit to the right here, because in case you're having some first layer adhesion problems, there is now still enough space everywhere to go and add a brim to the outside only. Now, one thing I would say that if you're having adhesion problems, it's a trope in the 3D printing. First, sort out your build plate level, but on top of that, clean your build plate. And what I would say is don't use isopropyl alcohol. That creates a hydrocarbon layer across the entire thing. Anyway, it goes back into glass bed printing here, but what is the best here is literally just some dish soap water. Clean it up, make sure your hands are clean too. Clean it up, rinse it all off, then use a paper towel, clean it all off, and then make sure your hands do not touch the bill plate at all. There is so much oil on your hands that makes this super slick. So I found that for me personally anyway, that's when I ever have my PEI, textured bill plate is no longer sticking things down. I just give it a quick clean and I'm sorted and it's perfect. And it's just, that's it. That's usually the problem. But anyway, I diverse here, digress here. So that there is how you go about sorting this out for a bigger print. Now do be aware, this is much bigger. We've got a whole bunch of filament changes. This is a lot of geometry going on here. So I'm gonna click slice. I'm gonna speed this up and I'm gonna let you know how long it takes to slice something this size. One moment later, one moment later. There we have it. So that there is it all sliced up. Again, do not worry about any warnings that come here. We are forcing the slicer to do things that it doesn't want to do. But we're able to then do this once we force it to do what we want it to do. So that there is multi-material stack printing. Thank you so much for watching and keep making.